Hi guys, School here, and welcome to another Derail Valley, a Derail Valley major update nonetheless. I hope you're all very well and staying safe during these strange times. Uh, I myself am getting battered by hay fever right now. Can't grumble. Derail Valley Overhaul, as it's called, or over, Overhaul, Overhauled, Overhaul, I think it is, has had a major update to Derail Valley. You may remember I did a couple of videos on this game. I did a first look, ooh, crikey, a while ago, at least 12 months, I'd say. Things have changed quite a bit. They've had a major update to the visuals, so it looks a lot better. It's built on the Unity engine. It is early access. There's a, only a few devs working on this, but they're doing a, a pretty good job. So don't expect anything to be amazing visually. You might laugh at some of these graphics, but the game itself, the gameplay itself, is really, really good, and it's coming on really nicely. It's, if you love trains, this is something you need to look at. This is a DE2. Uh, this is a shunter, but it's generally speaking what you uh, end up using a lot when you first start to play the game. It's pretty much the only thing you can drive. Uh, it's a diesel electric. There's also a uh, six axle. This is a DE2 with two axles. There's also a DE6, a bigger one, but you can't drive it until you've got the right license. And I'll come to that in a second. Same thing applies to the steam engine here, the steam loco. Uh, the SH282 is not available. It says locomotive requires a license. This is a turntable, which is something that I can show you in a later videos. Uh, it's basically how you turn the trains around. In terms of the stations and stuff, they've been really redone. There's, there's a lot more detail to these things. There is a frame sort of lagging thing that happens now and again, which is slightly frustrating as something the devs are working on. But in terms of the visuals and the texturing, uh, superb. Really, really good. Physics-wise, this game has come on a long way as well. Uh, I'll show you coupling trains shortly and how we how we uncouple and couple uh, and pick jobs and haul things. But essentially, the game is... It now has a career mode. Think of it that way. Uh, the original kind of game that I played way back when was a case of jump on a train, haul some stuff, and don't derail it. And that was that. Now there's money, there's there's a licensing thing, there's fees to be paid, uh, and we'll talk about that now. So if we go into this station, so a, a number of these um, a number of these areas on the map, this is the steel mill, we're in this bit here. A number of these areas have a, they all have a station office, for example, which is where you hand in jobs and get your jobs and that kind of thing. But equally, if you look down the bottom here, there's other things. Diesel service, which is where you can get your uh, diesel, uh, vehicles, serviced, um, wheels, gas, you know, whatever you need, coal, uh, d anything and everything is where you do it here. There's also the coal service center, and then there's the shop. The shop is where you can buy things such as a remote control to control your shunter without actually being in the cab. You will notice that not all icons, and icons are present in all the different towns that you can go to. In the steel mill, uh, we have... Basically, the yellow, uh, the dark yellow, and the black. So we don't have a shop. Uh, there is a shop down in the harbour town, for example, but it's one, two, three, what's that, four shops across the entire map? Not a lot. So anyway, this is the station office. If you go into one of these things, you'll see there's a map, what we just saw here. Uh, there's a bunch of jobs on the table, which we'll look at in a second. There's also the Dero Valley in industry chain. This shows you how goods flow across the map. So, for example, the farm, which generates all these icons here, like that one there, that one there. These are like livestock icons. They are, they are goats, sheep, cows, pigs, chickens, wheat, corn. Uh, so the farm is a producer of goods. It doesn't accept goods. It just outputs stuff. Uh, that will go to, for example, a food factory, which will turn stuff into various um, goods like bread, meat products, dairy products. Uh, they will go off to a city or a town. You can see, like, there's basically the basis here for an industrial chain. That's what that is. Over here is the job validator. This is where we put our jobs and hand them in at the end. This is how we get paid. And then there's the career manager. This is the um, this is the big change. We'll come to fees in a second. If we look at licenses um, and scroll down, you can see we can go through this. There's a few things that we can unlock that we don't have yet. At the moment, the only thing I own is a license as a train driver and a license to drive a DE2, which is the shunter that we just looked at. If we want to drive the DE6, we're going to have to save up $200,000. And bearing in mind, I have 1,846 right now. So I'm a, 
a bit skint, shall we say. Um, there's the steam train, which is a $50,000, which is uh, apparently a really good hauler now. Um, that thing can haul, I think somebody said up to 1,300 tons, uh, whereas a D2 can only haul about 400. So that's a heck of a jump. But obviously the steam train requires a lot more effort to, to manage. Concurrent jobs, um, this is a license that you can get to allow you to take more than one job at a time. Really important. There may be things on this table that are going to the same place or very near to each other. And with concurrent jobs, you can basically accept more than one, put the consist together and haul it to your destination. Really good. Train length is the length of the train that you can take. If you actually look at some of these uh, jobs, let's pick up this one here. Uh, bottom right down there, it says long one is the license requirement. So currently we can't even accept that job. If we try to put it in the validator, it'll say you don't have the, the required licenses for this. There are other things, if you can see them, such as that one. Uh, that's a long two, which is the next one up, and that's a hazmat two. Um, this is a train with argon gas and liquid or whatever. So this is a hazmat, a hazardous material. So if you want to haul things like, you know, diesel around and oil and other hazardous products, then you've got to have hazmat licenses. Similarly, uh, there's a military license, which we can lock out. Why is that reset? There's a military license that we can get down here. There's a train length. There's a hazmat license. There's three of those. Let me look at the third one. 350 grand. And then there's the military license, which allows us to haul things from a military bases. Um, I don't know. Guns, alleys, who knows? <laughs> So there's a lot to do in the game, as you can see. Uh, now, the way the game works with fees, let me explain that. You don't own a train in this game. You don't own any, any consists. You don't own the locomotives. Nothing. What you do is you're a paid gun. You're a hired gun. You jump into a locomotive and you then accumulate costs. So you think of it as renting. You rent a locomotive. You jump in any locomotive on the map that you have the license for and then you drive it. As you're driving it, it accumulates wear and tear. It will burn diesel, uh, whatever fuel it's using, and that will cost you. And when you come to the fees section here, you can see the L L052, which is that shunter down there that I've been using. I literally drove it from the start station to here, and I've already accumulated $1,000 in, in fees. Yes, I know. Now, you can pay it here, um, or you can take it to one of the diesel service yards of which there is one here we backed it up into the diesel service yard it will cost half of that cost it's only if we want to get it done here it will cost us a full amount so that's something to bear in mind if you get yourself to a diesel center it will cost half the amount to repair that locomotive additionally there's this thing called copay now if you damage tra uh, trains or tracks if you spill goods onto the map if you damage things, derail them, drive your train into a barrier and smash the windows on it, all of that will cost money. And it costs a lot of money, as you can imagine. The copay is a bit like um, what you see. If you've ever played Euro Truck or an American Truck, it has like a co-insurance um, type thing. The maximum we will ever have to pay is 5000 So if we smash a train into a wall and cause 50000 worth of damage, it will only cost us a maximum of 5000 Now, here's the killer. When you get licenses, when you get one of these licenses here, it also bumps up the co-insurance. So if you was to get, for example, long one uh, license, it will bump that up by, I think, about $9,000. So your minimum then would jump up to 14000 So that's something that just comes with the territory. And the hazmat ones and the military ones make them jump even more. So the expectation is as you get better, um, you'll be able to, you know, Drive the train without damaging it, and therefore you won't need the co-insurance. That's the theory. Right, let's take a look at the jobs, uh, because we need to actually get paid, because we have no money. So what I like to do initially is get the ones that I can't do. For example, that's a hazmat too long too, so I'm never going to be able to take that. I don't have a long one license. I don't have a long one license. Uh, I don't have a long one license, so we'll get rid of those. Uh, there's another one. I like to get rid of things that I simply can't do. And that way I'm only left with things that I can do. And I can look for some patterns. Now there's not, because I don't have concurrent jobs, um, I'm not really going to be able to maximize anything. But I want to show you what, how I go about things. 
so now, having done that, there's generally speaking two kinds of, of job. Well, it's actually technically three, but let's think of it as two. There's jobs where we move freight, like this. Here's a logistical hall. It's moving um, cars around the map, relocating them. There's a freight hall uh, where we actually take goods around the map. This is steel slabs, steel rolls, steel bent plates. That's a freight hall in green, whereas that one's just moving empty cars around. They will be lighter, obviously, because they don't have goods on them. So you can get away with, uh, when you've got concurrent jobs, you can get away with like grouping these together. Your diesel electric DE2 can do about 400 tons. So that's something you need to bear in mind. If you take more than 400 tons worth of stuff, chances are you're going to get stuck. Then you've got the shunting jobs, and you may think to yourself, oh, shunting, just moving things around the yard. Meh. Um, that's what I thought initially, but um, particularly down at the harbour, which is a massive town. Massive. It's a great way of learning the, the town and how to get around it. And it's also kind of fun. And they do pay well, some of them. They do pay really well. So don't overlook the shunting jobs. But here's the real kicker. This one here, unload and store a train with ore. This, if you complete this, the shunting job, it will unlock the mission. Another, it will generate another job to take that stuff to the steel mill. So if you're looking at a job over here, for example, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, there's a steel mill job here, like going to a steel mill. If I do this first, I'll unlock another steel mill mission and I'll be able to do both. Yes, that works. And that's a good way of making money. These will generate more jobs, these shunting jobs. Which is cool, because you can do this this, and then do the next one. Uh, so what I would want to do is I would want to look at all of this and say, well, that's a goods factory, and that's a goods factory. So potentially, they go into the same place. Like, could we haul both of those? Uh, we could, because 223 tons plus 33 tons is well within our 400 ton limit. So the only thing that's stopping us taking that is the concurrent job license, which we don't have. But if we did have it, we could take both of these. And that's a good one to get at first, the, the concurrent job thing. So if you get that one though, she's 10 grad, that's a really good thing to kick off with initially because then you can do two goods. But also, you know, don't overlook the fact that, well, sometimes there are things on the way. For example, if we got a job to go to the Machine Town factory and a separate job to go to the Iron Ore, well, you know, we could traverse to here, unload one lot of consist and then carry on into the second which is another thing, another way of making money. Finally, if we look at the, the bonus time, this is how long you get to do it. If you complete it, if you hand the job in, move the goods around and hand it into the job validator within 24 minutes, as well as that money, you get another 50% bonus, which is honestly the way to make money in this game because 50% is a lot. Bear in mind, this is not how much you'll actually take home because while you're doing this, you're going to be accumulating fees on the locomotive and it's going to cost you money. So you're going to have expenses to pay and you have to pay those expenses before you can buy a license. That is pretty much um, a very high level, 30,000 foot, 10, 13 minute overview of where we're currently at with Derail Valley. Now they do have a whole bunch of things that they're targeting that they're doing with the game. Uh, people have asked, you know, can you take two shunters and operate them both to haul extra heavy cargo? The answer is yes and no. If you get the remote control, you can control the second shunter with it, but it's a bit of a handful. But one of the things they're working on right now is slaving the shunters. So you can have one shunter slave to another, and then you can use it to haul a lot of stuff. That's currently in the works. They do have a whole bunch of things they're working on, uh, and that's one of them. So let's, uh, let's, Line up a job and I'll show you how it actually drives and you actually operate the trains. All right, so looking at through these jobs here, pretty much the one that pays the most is this one. Uh, it's the freight hull steel mill, 31 minutes up to the goods factory. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in my inventory by pressing the tab key. So if I hold down tab now, you can, you can see that it's in position to that. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you kind of leave the area a little bit and come back, it will regenerate jobs. Uh, not quite like it used to, where whenever you left the area, it would completely redo everything. Um, now what it does is it kind of refreshes some of them. So you might have your eye on a job, 
and you sort of go over here to the locomotive and you come back and suddenly that particular one's gone. So if you put it in your hand, that'll stop that from happening. Now, what, what I want to do is just quickly scope out this. I want to I want to figure out where it is in the yard so that we can line up our ducts, as it were. Um, without validating the job, it doesn't tell us exactly which platform it's on, but we can pretty much figure it out by just looking at it. Uh, this is a four-car train. It has steel slabs and steel bent plates, as you can see. Um, it's basically this one, isn't it? Look, one, one car, two car, three car, four car. If you look at it, it's that shape. So that means I can get my locomotive ready uh, before we actually decide to go ahead and haul because there's a few complications that I just want to show you. Uh, I know you want to see me drive this thing, but honestly, without showing you this stuff, you're going to be scratching your head. How do we how do we know where, where things go in the yard? What do all these numbers mean and how does it work? Um, if we start the job now, we're, we're probably going to waste like five, ten minutes just moving this locomotive around the yard to get ready to hook up. And here's why. If we look at the map um, where this thing needs to go, this if we take this job, it's going to the goods factory town. We're in the steel mill. The goods factory town is just up the road there. It's very easy to get to. It's also a dead end if you notice. That particular track goes over the top though. There's no connection here. So we have to come in from this direction and we'll have to take a right at that turn there and then go straight into the goods factory town. If you look at um, your station map, which is this one, if we scroll the station map down to the goods factory, you're going to see something interesting. The goods factory A overview consists of B section, C section and D section. That is the B section, that is the C section, and that is the D section. Now, the if you look at the, the actual um, tracks coming in and out, they're all numbered with, with, they have a number and a letter. So, for example, um, that one there has a 5i and a 6i. That is an input line, right? That means stuff coming into the goods factory will probably go into one of these 5 or 6i's. Stuff coming out of here will go into one of the O's, and this is a shunting or a siding. That will probably have some like empty cars on it, that kind of thing. So chances are, when we take this, it will ask us to go to 5i or 6i. We know that because if we look at the other ones, there are no I's. Yeah, That's a passenger station, by the way, and that's on one of the um, things that they want to do. They want to implement passengers in the game. They've not got it yet. There are no passenger cars or jobs, but that's on the list. There is no other I here, so almost certainly this job will go to D, and it'll be 5I or 6I. To get to D, we'd have to look at this map here and figure out where D is. Well, D is here. It's right at the end of the whole thing. We will be coming in from the southwest, if you look at this. We're coming in from the southwest here. And we will have to drive all the way through B, through C, loop around and go into D and then figure out where 5 or 6 I is. It's the same thing here. We, If we actually have a look at the steel factory, where we are now, this is the overview. Now, I happen to know that this is southwest. And the reason I know that, you see where the line splits and the triangle? If you actually look at... The steel mill you can see this is where the line splits that's the triangle so this is southwest which means this is southwest so we are looking at the steel mill from the southwest here this comes into b section which is where we currently are this is b section right now if you wanted to carry on it would go through and, and carry on to the northeast and if you wanted to come to these other bits you'll need to reverse back you can see there's no way to get into these bits without going through here and funnily enough that's where the turntable is. Remember at the start of the uh, video? That's where we were, right there at the turntable. If we want to go there and turn our loco around, we're going to have to go through and then reverse back to the turntable, spin it around, and then come back out again. And that is what we're going to have to do. And the reason I know this is because this is 1-0. This is the, the goods we just looked at. This is 1-0. If we look at the map, it's going to be in the B section, which is the B transfer yard. And 1-0 is right here. Now, what's really confusing is you might think to yourself, well, hang on a minute. How can 1-0 be on the right, but on the map it's on the left? Well, it's because 
this is pointing to the southwest. So actually, this map is like this because we just worked out that's the southwest. And this is something you really have to watch out for. It will catch you out time and time again. So we're coming in from the southwest. That means we're going over to the left-hand track, which is 1-0 here, which is this one. We know that we need to head out to the northeast, which is that away, which basically means we need our loco on this side. It's no good being down there. We need to reverse it, and we need to get it on here. But if we reverse it and then drive it straight in here, the locomotive will be facing the wrong way. And that's not good because it doesn't cool properly when it's facing the wrong way. This is the front where the radiators are, and we need it to be facing the other way right now, northeast. So we've got to spin this train around. So I'm going to take it over to the turntable, spin it around, and then we'll bring it back and hook up. Right, there's the turntable over there. This is the service yard. I thought, while we're here, let's just show you the service yard in action. You might as well see it before we turn this thing around. Um, the other thing we could have done is we could have actually taken that particular loco, uh, put it on turntable and driven it over there. There's no reason why we had to take this loco. That's the thing. Everything is available for your use. Um, it's just going to cost you. Right, so the green light is on. Let me just kill this thing. I'll show you how to drive the loco uh, shortly. I just want to get you through some of the, the basics of the game so you understand what's going on. So... Um, if we look here, engine, it says 97.47%. Um, basically, that's the state that it's in out of 100. Uh, the unit cost is 75. So if we wanted to fix that, we'd have to fix 3.53 3 times 75. That's what it would cost us. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, there's also things like the diesel. Currently has 1,800 liters in there. Unit cost 3.36. So if we basically pulled... <laughs> This is a bit fiddly. This game is built for VR, so it can be a bit weird, but you can just move the mouse wheel and hold it down like that. There you go. So if we pull that all the way back, it says you need to add 179 liters times 3.36, total of 600 liters. And remember, if you get everything done here, this will be half the cost that it costs you back at that manager station. And then if you want to pay, you just go buy, and then you get your wallet out. Cheers, that key there. Click on that. Buy, and we get receipts to say, we spent $600 on diesel. And that's how you get the thing serviced. Uh, you bring it into the yard. When the lights go green, you can access all these things, and it will be half the price of what you pay back at the manager. Now, in terms of driving this, let me just um, turn some of this stuff off. This is a very simple locomotive to drive, really. Um, it has the usual setup. It has the reverser here. I don't know why I just looked at that and then point, but there you go. This is the reverser here. So you can either drag it like this, which is what you would do in VR, and you can do it with your mouse, or you can map a hotkey and just do it that way. Same thing with everything else. You've got um, your throttle, which is here, like that. And then you've got your uh, independent brake, which is over here which accesses the train, and then you've got the full train brake, which accesses all the cars as well. You've also got a cab lights that you can turn on and off, and headlights that you can turn on and off. You've got a horn that you can access. Uh, you've got this fan. This doesn't actually do anything yet. I've spoke to the dev about this. This is a placebo fan. Some people thought, oh, it cools the engine more. No, it doesn't. It doesn't do anything right now. Uh, over here, you've got the brake pipe pressure, so this has to be fully enabled before... Um, the brakes actually release, and you need to keep your eye on the reservoir to make sure when your engine's running, it'll refill the reservoir because you need the brake, you need the air pressure to release the brakes, basically. Now, one of the key things about driving this train is the state of repair it's in and the engine temperatures and stuff like that. So down here is how much oil you have. Obviously, if you start damaging the train or running it into the ground, it will eventually, you know, break down on you. Uh, and then you have to recover it. This is your fuel status. It, it's obviously quarter and half markers. We just filled it up, so it's completely full. Sand? Sand costs a lot of money. Let me just say that right now. Sand costs almost as much as fuel. So you need you need sand when you're climbing uh, or accelerating aggressively. Um, but don't leave it on longer than you need to, because my life, your money will drain. Temperature. This is the biggie. 
So when you're climbing, you're going to hear a bell when it hits the yellow mark. If it hits the red, the engine will shut off for a little while, uh, which is something you don't want. So speed and energy management is critical. And you need to make sure that you will, you know, you can accelerate for a while, warm the engine and then back off and just, you know, you might lose some speed going up a hill, but the engine will get a chance to cool down as the air comes in through the reds. Starting this thing is pretty simple. Flick those three switches, turn that to the right and off you go. And then I'll just like to whack those lights on, uh, stick the reverser into reverse like that, release the brakes, independent brakes releasing, and then you just simply put the throttle forward. Now, if you don't map any hotkeys, you're going to have to basically like keep turning around and doing this, which is maybe how you want to play the game. Certainly in VR, that's what you're going to have to do anyway. Um, but it can be a bit fidgety. You know, like in real life, you can stand here with your, your arm on that thing and look that way. In the game, you, you have to keep doing this, which is why I prefer to just map a hotkey so that I can basically simulate the fact that I'm looking one way but my hand is down here. Uh, but you may want to play it how you want to play it. Now, this is the radio controller that I didn't mention to you before. This is something that you get at the start of the game. It has three modes. It has switch, re-rail, and clear. Oh, and crew vehicle, which I'll come to at some other point. But basically, the most time you want to use it is in switch mode, and this will switch the points from one direction to the other. So you can see that sw that point is now going to the left. If we switch it that way, it's going to the right. This is something that you will need to be careful of because one mistake here and it can cost you time reversing your train, fixing the problem and lose your bonus. So be careful about that. Planning is a big part of this game. Planning your journey is a big part. It will save you money on fuel and you'll make sure that you know where you're going and you'll get your points right. Rerail is an option. If, if we derail something, be it a carriage or a, um, a loco, we can simply click on the vehicle, click it back on the track and for a fee, we can re-rail the train, which is something that was never in previous versions, pre-overhaul. So finally now, we can actually get things back on track. Now I'm just going to jump out, which you do by pressing the F key, because I've just noticed that this is not lined up. There you go, you'll hear it clunk when it's in position. Uh, so you, you can quite easily get out of your vehicle, press the F key. Um, it will teleport you like that. When you get near the loco, press F, it'll teleport you back in. Um, and the reason for that is, remember, this game is built for VR. So you're meant to get out and teleport around because you can't easily walk around in VR without feeling sick. Um, also, the remote controller, like I say, is available to 25 grand purchase from the shop. And you can stand out there and operate the controls of the vehicle, which if you're doing shunting around the yard, is very, very convenient. I'm just going to back off on the throttle. There is a lot of friction on this train, by the way. So if you back off on the throttle, you'll notice the speed dies down quite quickly. Right. Now, that is fine for moving the train small amounts, but for moving it at large amounts, it's just so much easier to come in here. Like, pushing that around 180 degrees takes a while. There we go. And then we just simply jump back in the cab. Put the reverser into forward. Release the brakes. And off we go. So I'm just going to drive this out of here and reverse it back into the siding. Then we'll, we'll get this job accepted and we'll get on our way. Effectively, we just need to set the points up to go left, left, left. So the first one's going to be that one there to send us on a left route and then we're going to keep left all the way into that very very outer track guys i apologize if i've thrown too much at you in this video i've just realized that i've actually tried to show you everything in the game in a very short space of time so i'm sorry if you feel a little bit bamboozled by it all um perhaps i've i've shown you too much in one go um i will break things down as we go through future videos and explain more concepts and that kind of thing uh, but just remember that this game is an early access, uh, which means two things. One, it's unfinished. 
uh, is the main thing. There's a lot more to be added. It is not the finished article. Um, there's loads of things people want in the game. There's a massive wish list. Uh, the second thing is the guy does need, you know, the guys that are developing it need people to buy the game to make sure that they can carry on making it. So if that's something you fancy, you fancy jumping in as, you know, for early access, then um, please do so because the more the more sales they get, the more likely this product is going to succeed. There's only one map at the moment, but one of the things you want to have in the future are uh, more than one map and allow an editor for the maps as well so that people can create map, map mods and obviously more trains to drive and more stuff to do. Right, I'm not going to hook that up um, because I just want to double check before we validate the job that that is the correct job. Um, but I'm like 99% sure it is. It, it will be from... That's not 10, that's 1 0. Oh, that caught me out. One output is what that is. So, because we kept our job in our hand, we've still got it here. If we hadn't have done, chances are some of these would have refreshed. So, we take it over, uh, but before we hand it in, just want to quickly do the final bit of prep. We think that this will go from the steel mill 1 0, oh, and it will go to the goods factory. And our current guess is that it will go to D section and probably to five or six I is what we're expecting. We also know that getting from the steel mill involves going northeast and then taking a right hand turn at that triangle and then going straight into the goods factory and we'll go all the way through and D section will be at the bottom. That is our best guess right now. But by doing that planning, it means we give ourselves the best chance to do this in 31 minutes. So. We'll chuck it into the job validator. It's going to give us the job and we are now go. So the first thing is we pick it up from B10, which is exactly what we thought. But just to be doubly sure, we'll check the serial number on the first car. Uh, CFF638, which is the one on the right. And the last one is CFF963. So that's correct. There's nothing else attached to it. Uh, sometimes there'll be more consist attached to it and you'll end up hauling the wrong stuff if you're not careful. So that's something to watch out for as well. Make sure you only take the cars that you need to take. Okay, so the engine's started. Now the way you couple this thing up is you get underneath with the crouch key, which is control. You drag the coupler over. Uh, click the lock key. You then drag the brake hose over. And then you click both of those. That puts the brake pressure down the pipe and will unlock all of the shoes on all the cars. If you don't do that, you won't be able to move this very easily. In other words, not at all. Okay, reverses in forward, releasing the brakes now, and we're going to head out. There are speed limits on the track. They are not enforced. It's not like if you break the speed limit, you'll lose points. Basically, the speed limits are there to advise you on the maximum recommended speed for the track ahead because if you don't stick to it you will derail now there is some flexibility if it says 40 40 kilometers chances are you can get away with it for like 45 maybe if you're lucky 50 but you're pushing your luck if you do let's check we're hauling yes we are hauling but yeah you you need to pay attention to what's coming anticipation is the key There's going to be a left turn there, so there'll be a little bit of a speed drop there. That's the starting zone, by the way. And then it's going to be a very straight, fast run through, and a sharp turn, and then right and into the goods factory. Now, 10 multiplied by 10 is 100, so the speed limit of the track down here is 100. Keep your eye on the engine speed as we start to work this engine. Um, I don't think we're going to go through any major hills, uh, so we won't have overheating to deal with. Uh, 80 limit down here and then a 50 if you notice so we don't want to be going more than 50 around this particular left turn there are symbols around the map you see that blue one there the blue and the white that means level uh, there's other ones which will show which indicates um, that you're going to be climbing if you go to train basics here and go to the very last page there you go so I'm just checking my speed. I'm trying to do more than one thing at once. Oh, God. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Get the brakes on. We've just gone the wrong way completely. I was not paying attention. And we've taken a right turn. We should have taken a left turn. 
Bolts. <laughs> Now it takes a while to release the brakes, you'll notice uh, that brake pressure line has to come up all the way up to like, was it three and a half bars or something before it'll actually release the brakes. Uh, the points are remembered from what you last did, so because I last came out of this starting area, the point was still set to take me back in there, and because I was looking at showing you symbols and speed limits and stuff, I didn't actually pay attention to which way the point was going. Now that has cost us one or two minutes we should still be okay but it just goes to show you how easy it is to make a mistake now imagine if you get the point wrong when you've got behind you 300 meters 400 tons worth of oil you can imagine the brake distances reversing fixing that problem is going to take you a while now we flick that point back to where it needs to be Try not to fail this time. Okay, release the brake pressure. Now, well, let me show you. If I accelerate too hard, watch the wheel slip indicator. There you go. Put the sand down. So, if you need to put power down quickly, you will wheel slip. When you do that, you'll cause damage to the wheels, which will cost you money. If you put sand down to stop the wheel slip, that will cost you money. Again, planning is key. So, I was showing you this thing here. Not that one. Uh, which key was on? Train basics, number seven. Yeah, so flat is blue. It's always blue at the bottom. Think of it that way. It's blue at the bottom, and then it's yellow if you're going uphill, and red if you're going downhill, white if it's level. But that explains it all in the in the inbuilt documentation of the game. 70 limit, we can pretty much just floor it down here. It's quite a quick run. The more you, you go around the map, the more you kind of learn where things are. For example, if you head out of the steel mill here, uh, this section here is a climb. So you need to come out with steam wheel with quite a lot of speed, otherwise you'll slow down on that climb before the left turn. And then on the left turn you need to drop your speed quickly, otherwise you'll derail. Did I mention this game is quite challenging? So, the temperature's heating up as the speed increases. We are, if we back off on the engine, we can coast. You'll notice the temperature comes down, but because we're fairly level, the speed's remaining the same. So energy management and temperature management are a big thing in this game. If, for example, we was taking a left turn out of here, uh, there are there's a, that's a very hilly climb through there. That section is a very hilly climb, as is that spiral. That's a spiral through a big tunnel. It's really good. Um, you will need to take a run up through here, otherwise you won't make it to the top because your engine will just overheat. It is challenging. Okay, so we're going to come up to a right-hand turn, then a left, and then we're going to have to point, change the points to go right. But here's the thing. If I was, if I just left the engine running now, maintaining that speed, if I wasn't idling, I would be burning more fuel. And if I'm burning more fuel, I'm burning money in my wallet. So this game really does encourage you to learn how to drive properly and I like that I like that a lot like if I play train sim world or train simulator it doesn't matter I can idle my engine and I don't I don't see any benefit I can just leave it in gear no benefit it doesn't measure you on that stuff this game everything costs you braking sanding accelerating just moving costs you money and therefore if you want to maximize your profits and you're a self-employed contractor basically, so you want to maximize your profits, you're going to have to learn to drive the most efficiently you can. Now we need to pay attention to whatever the speed limit is. This is a 60 speed limit around this bend. Uh, we're just cruising down to 60, so we should be good. Barring another speed limit change. There's a lot to handle in this game, uh, particularly when you're on the approach to a station. Uh, there's a lot of point switching you have to do, figuring out where you are, where you're going, what speed you're doing. There's a lot to do, which is why 
getting ahead of the train, planning ahead, I think is a real key thing to do. You can now imagine if you're in a steam train, while you're doing all of this, you're shoveling coal, you're watching the pressures, you know, you're just in the regulator, all the rest of it, and if you kill your momentum, it's hard to get it back. The steam train is a lot more interesting to drive, but, you know, definitely something for later. Get used to the DE2 before you even go down that road. Left turn, and then we'll have a right turn. Now, normally at these triangles, um, these triangle junctions here, normally the speed limit is around 50. You're going to be want to be doing no more than 50 when you get to them. So I'm going to start applying a little bit of brake. Now, you only need a little bit to be applied. And you'll notice your speed comes qu down quite quickly and then just release the pressure. And it takes a while for the pressure to release and then you'll find your speed. If you shave off a bit too much, just bring a bit more throttle in. Right, 80, 50, there we go. So if you notice that point is set the wrong way, it's going to send us to the left. So we're going to do that and we'll switch it to point to the right. In fact, this has got a 40 limit to the right, if you notice. We're doing 40. See that? 4 to the right, 120 to the left. So yeah, it was good that we got on top of our speed early. Because again, the more moment, the more kind of mass you have behind you, the longer it's going to take to adjust those speeds. Now, now is the time to start thinking about the goods factory. We know that we want to go straight through. We're coming in southwest. We're going to go straight through B, straight through C, keep going, round to D. Now, if we double check the consist, step one was pick up from B10 and take it to the goods factory D5I. So we basically second guessed what the game was going to give us. So we do want to go through to the D section and then 5I, because we're going to be coming in from the northeast, aren't we? We're going to be coming in from here. This is the terminus. We're going to go to the right, first track. 5I will be on the right. Let's get some sand down because there's an unexpected hill. Looks like the goods factory is on a climb. So um, that junction limited to 40 and then as we came through it, we need to get the power down. Turn the sand off, save some money. Keep the climb going. Normally, um, when you come up to these major factories and stuff, normally there's a through track in the middle, which is, and the points will be set up to take you through by default. But if you've been to the factory before, you may have changed the signaling and when you come back again, you've forgotten that you did that, so don't assume that everything will be set correctly. Assumption will definitely get you in trouble. Look at that bridge, guys. Look at that. How cool is that? Look at it. I know it's Unity and the graphics are not amazing, but it is still really fun. I just wish these frame stutter problems could be solved. Now, notice the engine temperature. We're still on an incline at the moment. Let's see where we are on the map. So we're not that far away from the entrance to the goods yard. There's a 50 limit, so I'm just going to back off on the throttle so we can see what's going on. And we're going to have to make sure that we're going through. Now, we don't need to worry about the 30 because we're not turning into a siding yet. That's set up to go straight on. And the whole thing should loop all the way around to the right. That's what we're expecting. So straight along, no deviation. Um, some people wonder if you can go external camera. You can't. And the reason you can't is because this game was built for VR only. They added non-VR support afterwards and there's no external camera. There's just you in first person view. Now I don't know what the track speed limit is around here. But I'm thinking... 40 or even 30 is probably a good idea. I'm just going to bring it down a touch. It looks like a fairly sharp end. 
There we go, yeah. You can tell what the wheels are doing if you listen. If you hear loads of screeching, that's a good sign that it's heading towards derail. I'm just going to keep it this kind of speed. Right. Now I think to the right and then to the right again, isn't it? Is that 5i? Yeah, there you go. We can see 5i right there. So if we go right here and as we make the turn, we'll take a left here. And this is 5i. So yeah, all that planning paid off. What you don't want to do is just get to the station and then start bringing out your station map and going, oh, where are we going? <laughs> now, the other thing we need to do is figure out where the... Um, where the house is and it looks like it's back over at B that's where the shop is there's also a service centre here funnily enough because the timer is still running until we hand this job in until we hand this job in at the station manager we will not be paid and the clock is still running so we're going to drop that here So we'll kill that. Now you must uncouple it, otherwise it won't count. So you want to close the valves. Disconnect. Unlock that. Disconnect that. And then we've got to run and find the shop. And this is the only bit that I actually hate, because sometimes you can't find these shops easily, even when you look at the map. Right, if we bring that to Job Validator and throw it in. Job complete. Bonus time, let me just put that there a second because it wants to pay us. Don't forget to take your money. Uh, so if you look, 14,600. Okay, and the reason we got 14,600 is busy because we got 9,700 plus 50% bonus because we did it in 15 minutes. Job is complete, bonus pay. So we got 14 grand. Well done. No squirrels were harmed. Absolutely wonderful. If you do environmental damage, like, uh, you know, you tip your thing over and spill diesel everywhere, you're going to pay a hefty price for that. So, you know, don't do that. But that's that's the essence of the game right there. Um, we have accumulated costs on this thing. We've just been running this thing for a while. So if you want to look at quickly how much that will cost you, and bear in mind, um, you could just take it into the yard and, and pay half price, which is something, you know, obviously you're going to do if you can. 4,265. Um, we currently have now 15,000, which means... Get rid of that. Which means we could go to licenses and buy either train length one or concurrent job one. And you might make your decision based on what you see here. Um, that's a long one, for example. 15 grand down to the harbour town. Or you may think to yourself, oh, well, we'll do, uh, we'll do a couple of goods factory runs. Like that one. We'll shunt this and then we'll take both of them down to the... So therefore we'll get concurrent jobs. But if I try to get this now, if I try to get, say, concurrent jobs, it will say, your fees are not cleared. In order to buy a license, you must clear your fees. So we have to get rid of the fees to do that, um, which I will do. But that, I think that's a long enough video, guys. I do apologize for the sheer length of this video, but there's so much to show you. There's lots added to the game. Uh, lots more to do. Um, I can do more videos on this if there's something you fancy. Show you how to get the licenses and we can drive along and all that kind of good stuff. Take some really big hauls. Uh, but that's enough for this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I shall see you on the next one. Take care, guys. Happy training.